It's a sketch comedy podcast show. All right, let's see. Uh, we are recording. Okay. Excellent. Hey, Rusty. Thanks, thanks for joining Stuart. me today. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having. Hey, I've got a, um, I've got a, a real serious question to ask you. Sure, I'm serious as, as shit. All right. What makes you interesting? What makes me interesting? Well, I'm a, you know, I'm a 170 pound pro wrestler for one. Uh, You're a pro wrestler at yeah, 170 pounds. Okay. Yeah, the uh, you know super super heavyweight right there. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I've been I've been hurt the last year though, so it's been been a little different, but. Uh, so when you say pro wrestling, are you talking about like, uh, like do you you have a stage name? Yeah. Is it called a stage name or is it called a ring name? Uh, either either one. I think what you know, it's just kind of become a name now. Uh, but yeah, that's that's Rusty Diamond, and that's it's been that way since yeah, since eight years. And it's it's weird any, anyone when anyone calls me any other name. It always always throws me off. Yeah. So yeah, I've so always I'm always going by Rusty, and if, yeah, if someone says something else, I, I may turn around. Um, but yeah, usually I don't. Usually yeah. it's just that's fair. Like if it's just Rusty, and if someone says something else, something they're talking to someone else. Right. Um, have you, have you has your family all transitioned over to? Mostly, yeah. My uh, my mom my mom still hasn't, but pretty much everyone else in my family has, and so. Yeah, it's only usually if it's my mom that says my my other name. Uh, but yeah, it's it's weird. It's it's weird when she says it. And yeah, with when I um, yeah when I go over to her house or if I, I have if I'm going over there with my girlfriend and you know she starts calling me by my other name and it gets all it gets a little confusing there. And you know she's my girlfriend's not used to my mom calling me by that name and then, or anyone calling me by that name. Most right. every, yeah, most everyone I know calls me Rusty, so it's always a little confusing. Sure, sure, but, I could see that. Yeah. But, um, and how did you get into pro wrestling? Is this something that started young or? Yeah, I mean, I was uh, like three, four years old living just outside New York City and this was mid-1980s and that was like the huge huge boom right there for, sure right for yeah the, where they even had a cartoon do you remember yeah. the cartoon oh yeah yeah, yeah. But hulk hogan's rock and wrestling yeah 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 i mean yeah and that was that was what i was way into right then and um yeah my my dad worked in the the food service or not food service but like uh, the food industry and he uh, they had those really disgusting um, ice cream bars that they used to sell where they had they were like uh, the vanilla with a weird cookie kind of it's kind of a cookie but it's not crispy like yeah a it's not it's crispy just like smushy yeah cookie like material yeah it's pretty gross yeah but uh, yeah his the company he was working for used to, to make those and so yeah and, um, so he'd end up, you know, seeing the guy, and then like living in New York, he used to see the guys on the airplane, and so you know, get promotional stuff from them, and, uh, and yeah, like my parents grew up here, and grandparents, and like they used to go to the shows here in Portland, so it's always kind of been a thing that I've always been into, and then yeah, well, you know, growing up, just I was just so into it, except for, you know, there was a little time when I was maybe in middle school high school where it wasn't cool and I, right. I had to kind of deal with that for a while but yeah you kind of you do it on the down low yeah like maybe the, you get the wrestling magazine and your trapper keeper like, yeah. yeah 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 hit yeah, yeah. keep keeping it away a little <laughs> bit but yeah I, I, I still loved it and yeah. uh you know then eventually I just embraced it and it, it was always kind of my thing but I always thought I was too small to to be doing this and I went to a local show in like 2008 uh, and I I just fell in love with it I, I loved what they were doing at their show and I started going every month and um, eventually my friend and his brother they started training uh, and then they, they got me to do it they're like you gotta do it I'm like no, 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 I'm too small. I'm like, you got to do it. And so I ended up doing it. And, you know, because uh, I was a very loud fan. I would, 
I would be trying to make uh, make all the bad guys very mad, and I had a pretty big mouth. So once I got in there and they started training me, like they they beat the shit out of me. They were oh yeah yeah they were super ready to get a hold of me like. Like, oh, it's this guy who's been talking all this shit at us. Like, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna kick his ass. So, yeah, they, they beat me up. But I still kept coming back and I, just because I, I loved it so much. And, uh, and I, yeah, we just kind of went from there. And, uh, yeah, now, whatever. Like, I, I started in 2010, so eight years later. Just still, yeah. still going, getting to see all the weird, small, like every kind of, um, you know, fraternal organization, all the uh, the Elks lodges, the Moose lodges. Sure, and that's the, is that where like the matches are held or like usually those types of places? Yeah, you know, I've been yeah tons of those. I've even uh, one time I wrestled in a, a Walmart parking lot in Chico, California, and that was interesting. That was yeah. Uh, I don't know if I ever want to do that one again. That was the first time I was a, um, a bad guy. And I had this guy down there, and he wanted to kill me. He was this fan. He was ready to just, like, jump over and kill me. And so after I got done with my match, I had to go. I had to run to my car and go and get in there and go under the, like, throw a blanket over me until the show was over and we were able to get out of there and leave. And Really? Yeah. Yeah, he was dead serious. Yeah, then. he was dead serious. He was ready to kill me. And we went down there like five or six more times after that and just I had to I had to really keep my distance. But he was he was a large man, so I could still run away from him, but yeah, he was ready to ready to kill me almost every time. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Like, so what was it so as a bad guy in yeah. wrestling, like yeah. what makes you a bad guy? Like is it just like you what is it? What, I'm. I love just. You sleep with this guy's wife, or what happened? I just get up there and I, I have. I just have a big mouth, and I'll just go and sure. I'll I'll say whatever I want, and I'll, uh, you know, just taunt them, and uh, yeah, just really try to get under their skin, and it, it worked really well. I guess maybe if, too well. If he, if he was trying to kill me, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I it's it was a lot of fun, and. Um, yeah, I did that for like two two years or so. Okay. And yeah, now now I'm back to being a good guy, and it's it's different. It's been uh, last show was our first one that we were, were back as as good guys, and it's yeah, it's it's different. So I'm still trying to get the the fans to like me again. But, sure. Is there like you have to do? Do you have to do like a public transition from a bad guy to a good guy? Did you have to come in and like with the narrative as to why you were now not a bad guy? Yeah, yeah. The way it was when I turned from a good guy to a bad guy, we were well. It's kind of come full circle. We were this group. We were called the High Five, and we were um, five stoners and yeah, High Five. You know, stoners seem like the appropriate. Yeah, uh, that's wrestling. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, it made it real easy, and so we eventually, I ended up turning on them. I was, um, I wasn't really wrestling then. I was like, I was a manager, and just uh, yeah, I turned on them because yeah, I started wrestling, and I, um, we were doing it was a there was a death match going on between the guy that I was tagging with now and or then i guess and then my old team one of the guys from my old team and they were doing a death match and i ended up turning on my um the guy i was old the, the old team the high five and i, yeah, I pulled to, you know took off the shirt and had my my other shirt on there uh, <laughs> one of those and yeah then started beating him up and then and then the way we just turned so then we eventually um just recently, so I was tagging with my friend. We were the Purple Wizards, which was, we, there was a, I, I typed in tag team name gener generator in uh, Google and just started going through his names and Purple Wizards came up and like, oh, oh we're gonna, we're gonna totally. be the Purple Wizards. Yeah. So we did that for a couple of years and yeah, traveled all over and um, and then we ended up uh, stopping that and then we I went back with the 
High Five, but now they were a new team. They were called the Higher Five, and they had become a religious group. And so I sort of became like the um, like the spiritual advisor, which I was before, but now I was like, since they're a religious group, we became kind of the bad guys. So I was, yeah, the you know the the guy upstairs, the um, the just the yeah the sort of like uh, oh, what's the word like a. Uh, like, like, a, like a cult leader. Like kind. a guru or like something guru, like that. Yeah. yeah. And and then, yeah, so then recently we had a show. We were running shows at Harvey's here, the comedy club. Right. And we uh, were doing a bake sale for, you know, ch- selling church brownies. And um, the, one of the other teams we were wrestling, they went and switched out the brownies with some, some hot brownies. And then we all ate them and we... Um, Ended up becoming became the higher, more higher five. Yeah, became the higher, higher five, and <laughs> yeah, now we're now we're back to being being that, and nice. Yeah, getting to be all you know fan favorites, and that's good. Yeah, it's it's, it's a blast. I, so I love fun. doing it, and um, yeah, I'm not traveling really anymore because yeah, once I once I busted my knee, I just kind of stopped. I, I busted it working um, at my other job. I was, yeah, carrying uh, like a hundred pounds of flooring and um, walking across a driveway that was unfinished, and I stepped in a hole and twisted my knee, and uh, and then that was that. So yeah, that was last July, and yeah, so I haven't really been doing much. I've gone up to Vancouver, BC, and done a few shows up there, just like you know, helping out a little bit, like. Do it being like uh, like ringing the bell or something, sure, just so sure. I can get out and do something. But right, get visible again. Yeah, but yeah, I haven't I haven't done much. The yeah, the ones up in Vancouver were really fun. I really liked doing those shows. Every six months they do a show at this uh, this place called the Commodore Ballroom, which is like kind of a world famous place. And like, I mean, anyone who's anyone that's been in entertainment's performed there, like from. You know, from like Elvis to like Nirvana to you know. Oh wow! So uh, it's like a big venue. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And they run it yeah every six months. You know, it sells out in really quick, like a thousand seats. But yeah, it sells out super fast, and yeah, it's kind of their big show. And yeah, it's it's always a lot of fun. I I did that one, like one. I think I wrapped that that show like once, and uh, I never I never wrestled on it, but. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy being in front of that many people. But then I, you know, done shows where there's been more people behind the curtain than there are out in the crowd. There's been like you know, sure. fifteen people out there, and those ones I'm I'm usually more nervous than you know, because with, with a thousand people you can't see anyone. No, it's it's like it's a blur. Yeah, like it's it, a total you know, blur. But you get like, you know, fifteen people. Like you look over and you see Harvey over there. Right. And he's like got a grumpy face. You're like ah. How do I make Harvey happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you really have to get yeah, in there and just <laughs> like really get into them and just yeah, yeah, I, um, really connect with them. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah a lot easier to connect with an audience when they're huge. But yeah, yeah, and same with I mean same with stand-up comedy. Like when you have a crowd of like, especially when it's just you know usually when you're doing like open mics and you get comp like uh, twelve or one o'clock in the morning, you get like four or five comics left sitting there and then like yes. the one person who's been playing video poker for 11 hours yes. straight yep. and you're like oh okay I'm just sort of yeah open mics are probably the hardest thing yeah. to get up and do and yeah. it is because it's the other comics and other comics don't laugh at your jokes no unless they're more successful than you yeah then they'll laugh at your jokes but right. usually at an open mic they're not ha- they're not more as successful than you you're there your competition so as soon as they laugh it's like giving you giving yeah. you props Mm-mm, that's it, not happening it does happen that with that yeah like if they're the more successful comic the mm-hmm. other people will start yeah. laughing at them and it's it's really weird and oh like, man I, it is catty yeah it's very catty <laughs> and that yeah I, that's kind of why I've, yeah i kind of got away from it it's like even in the last five years like this scene has got so huge mm-hmm. now there's i mean like five years there'd be like seven eight open mics uh you know a week and now there's oh there's probably a, like 30 yeah and 
just more comics than you. I mean, you can throw a, a rock and hit an open mic. Right. And, you know, there's they're full of comics. But I mean, no one, no one, no patrons attend them. But right. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. But, gone, but comics drink. Comics so. some. <laughs> <laughs> some of them don't. Some of them don't. Yeah, some that. Yeah, again, that's a lot of times when the mics will shut down is when the comics don't drink because they're not bringing anyone into the show right. to watch it. So, yeah, I mean, I was running a um, a showcase out in West Lynn, um, which is yeah, like a little small suburb outside of Portland. And right. It was some nights. I ran it on Tuesday night. Some nights it'd be packed, but then some nights it'd be like five five people in there and you, know, you can't really I don't know like I didn't I didn't really make much money off of it and it was kind of a get paid by the amount of drinking that right. is done that's so usually I'd end up paying the comics out of my own pocket just because I give them a little bit but just you to know, show up yeah really. just to show up yeah because yeah. I mean yeah I I don't know I'd like to find another place to do it but then again I'm like I, I don't really care I'd rather just do you know private shows or something where i'll get paid more and i don't have to worry about setting up that's that's what i've found works way better yeah is, you know you get like a group of 100 150 people and you get that same experience where it's like you've got so much of a crowd you can really yeah i mean you're not maybe not you can interact with the crowd a little bit right with that big of a crowd but then, but you don't run the risk of talking to five people yeah because if I t- if you tell a joke yeah and, and you've got jokes that you know 20% of the people are not going to like yeah. you know 40% of the people are not going to like but the other 60% are going to love it yeah uh, you tell those jokes with five people half the room hates you yeah <laughs> like, and yeah. they don't gonna and, give you a second chance yeah they're not coming back yeah, they're, they're lost they're gone they're, so yeah yeah so you have to you have to play it a lot different to a couple people versus a lot of people yeah I much prefer a lot of people yeah I do too and I like I can't remember jokes hardly at all like I'm, I'm terrible I have a horrible memory so most of my stuff I do is is crowd work, crowd work. or just yeah. you know telling a story that I'm thinking of at this time but yeah like I did jokes for a while, but then I, it also for me became tired of telling jokes, telling the same jokes. It wasn't, because it wasn't being funny to me anymore. So then I think that was coming across in my delivery that, it, you know. Yeah, you just, it's like rote memorization at this point. You're just yeah. like, ah, this, there, here's the punchline. Yeah, yeah. Right? I've told this joke so many times. Yeah. It's not, not even funny anymore. Right. So, yeah, so then. It's like oh, okay, I'm just gonna. I'm I'm used to talking and just going and going and going, whatever's going on. Um, and I always like that. Just like and that's that's kind of why I got more into podcasting than doing than doing comedy. Just because podcasting, like, like this, you know, it's just it's just talking and Different that's every single time too. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not not the same thing. You're not waiting to hit that same punchline that you know. Uh, everyone's you know especially when you're a group of comics and they've been around they've heard your same punchline that may or not be funny so many <laughs> times it's like oh here comes a setup again for this stupid punchline maybe right. they'll change it make it better but probably not so. and that I, I have to say for myself like well, that's my thing is I love a stupid punchline yeah and then coming in underneath with another joke afterwards yeah yeah I, I appreciate that yeah. I, I appreciate a stupid punchline yeah <laughs> Yeah, not everybody but, does. So I'm yeah, glad you do. yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I like I like the the ones that end up like that. Um, yeah, sometimes things get a little, you know, maybe like uh, too inside baseball. I guess the term for yeah. like uh, you know that for the room and just doesn't doesn't hit. But then you know you you do this joke that's funny to. You know, eight-year-olds, and it just everybody it kind of smiles. Everyone loves it. Like, and you're like, I can, hey, I've got I something it. I can go home and tell my kids. Yeah, right, right, yeah, and, and yeah, everyone's you know the trying. babysitter on the drive home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, you, you get one like that, and you're like, okay, this yeah. is this is gonna work. Everyone can relate to that. Not not everyone's trying to be. Um, you know, some uh, Lenny Bruce. Yeah, and not yeah. everybody's trying to be. You right. know, uh, yeah, right off the bat, right? Yeah. Off, just right off the bat, like, hey, I'm, I'm Lenny Bruce. It's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta work up to, work like, up to that. Yeah, <laughs> and like, like George Carlin, like he worked just very um, 
clean comedy for a long time. Eventually, he was able to transition. That's right. because people knew him, and uh, and like Bill Hicks, kind of the same thing. Yeah. Like, and ever you know, I forgot what comedy club it's in, but there's one. Uh, I want to say it's in Austin, where it says, like in the green room, you know, don't try to be, you know, Bill Hicks, like yeah. before you go on, like, you know, like. Just be yourself and don't don't try to don't try to be too much before you're you know no one you can't just go and jump into the story before that's like, true before yeah, you, you can, tell the backstory yeah, that's right yeah yeah so yeah that's absolutely true now if you do have a small crowd and you really want to get them to laugh is there any methods that you have that you can maybe control their minds oh well, yeah well now I can. Now that, now that tell me about that. Now, now like, that now that I've I've learned the uh, or I'm learning still the art of hypnosis, <laughs> I think. But, so first off, where was the genesis of that? Like, where did you where did you like? Was, was this like a wrestling thing when you were a kid, or was what is this? No, uh, well, actually, the thing is, when I started doing the the high five, um, being the guru, like I had these uh, the guy who kind of helped create my character he told me to get like uh glasses that have the hypnotic spiral on them so sure, yeah. i was already wearing those and then it just i kind of put it on the back burner for a long time and i never would have thought i would have gotten a hypnosis but then yeah i busted my knee and uh i was um i was going and like seeing a, a therapist and she told me uh about this book about um, empathic people and I read it and there was two jobs because I was trying to find a job because I knew I couldn't you know do anything physical anymore so one was uh, a Reiki and the other was a hypnotist and I was like you know I a hypnotist would be awesome like I could totally do that so I googled hypnotist or hypnotist in Portland and I called up the like the first guy that looked good and it did, did not look like you like didn't have the handlebar right. mustache yeah. and the top hat and... right yeah like yeah, i expect you know, most people to like <laughs> be like super creepy looking like and you wouldn't trust him at all but yeah and i i talked to this guy for like 25 minutes on the phone and then he's like he said hey come on in uh, to the office on monday and we'll we'll talk and i talked to him for about an hour and a half uh and just talking talking fascinating guy he's been doing uh, like hypnosis for 50 years he before that he was uh like uh he was one of the first guys to bring martial arts into the um, into the states and mm. he used to like train with bruce lee and uh, really yeah he's like 76 years old now and yeah uh, and then yeah he's done like a whole bunch of marketing stuff so we're going to learn that here soon which i need to yeah kind of understand more because that's still something that i'm i'm working on but yeah um a lot of people that i know who are my friends and family are kind of hesitant to you know have me do hypnosis on i them. totally understand yeah I, yeah you i know? mean i would understand if like my parents were like no don't yeah do hypnosis on don't be yeah don't, mm -mm. yeah I, I i don't know what you're gonna do to me yeah but, you know, I, I've had a few friends um, who have been all about it, and they they've loved it. Um, yeah, now uh, now it's just yeah, trying to branch out and get some more more customers, and yeah, trying to find something new. But yeah, I, I loved it. Like, uh, like I kept telling my girlfriend, I'm like, you know, hypnosis is great. This is just this is awesome. And I kept saying that over and over, and then that ended up being the name of um, my website and the company now. Just hypnosis is great. And I, I love it. Yeah. Huh, it's, it's, pretty that's very nice and yeah and you, do you the hidden you're not just like making people cluck like chickens right no not yet uh <laughs> I, I may do that down the line i do kind of i want to do the stage hypnosis just because like i you know have the, the background yeah, yeah gotta, all the performing like stuff perform. and um eventually i want to get to that i want to i have a like the private shows i've been doing i think like one of them i've been doing is the I do like a, for like a volunteer appreciation night for this uh, art festival in like us we go and i've done it the last two years and this next year i'll do like a, a stage hypnosis show and if i haven't done more of the stage shows i want to do that then and then maybe branch out to you know schools and you know 
companies and kind of go from there and yeah yeah I try to do that a lot just because then it's like I get a whole bunch of people at once that want to be there and they're gonna be paying for it as opposed to one-on-one -on -one. I still love doing the one-on-one -on -one, just you know having someone sit down or lie down and just talk to them and yeah, it's it's a blast I, I love it and you know then since then um, I've got into um, like so the um, sensory deprivation tanks yeah and, and the uh, and acupuncture and so like all three of these things together I'm, I'm I'm finding ways to kind of be able to maybe put these things together I, I have some ideas that I'm that are brewing inside my head um, but I've tried those recently I, I did the the sensory deprivation tank first and i did like hour and a half and yeah it, it was it was so isn't nice. that wild it's yeah. like the first uh i, I would say that i well i have no idea because you can't have no concept of time right but yeah exactly i would say for the first like 10 minutes i was just playing pong with myself and just like bouncing around yeah. like oh my gosh this is like how far out can i reach my hands before i touch the sides yeah. and okay I'm getting bearing and then i spent like at least 10 minutes trying to drown myself just like how do I? There's no way. Yeah. What if I lay on my side? Oh yeah, my trying god! Trying to flip over yeah, and just do it. Oh. Right back up. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Where'd you do it at? Um, float on. Over on Hawthorne. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I. That's where I went. Yeah, Did it's you, a nice place. I yeah, like this. Yeah, I, I loved it. Yeah. Did you like when I went in there in the waiting room? Everyone that was out in the waiting room just had this look on them, just like they incredibly relaxed. List out, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just like I, I'm like I want to do this right now. Like, yeah. This is I'm I'm ready. Did you do the, um, which tank did you do? Did you do the small one with um, this like, kind of like a pot or did you do the, like the, cause they had the big old ones with the big ceiling and the. Uh, oh, I just did a pot. I didn't yeah. know they had the yeah. ceiling ones. Yeah, I did one in the big ceiling. My, my friend, she did one in the, in the pod, which I want to do next time. Yeah, because, the pod was really cool. I mean, yeah. it was, you could hear nothing, see nothing, yeah. smell nothing nothing, nothing. Like yeah. it was just a bunch of nothing. Yeah, it was it's, amazing. Yeah, like. I know, you know, some people, yeah, might be reluctant to, to give it sure. a whirl, but yeah, like once, once you get in there, it's it's just so nice. Yeah, not being able to have any anything like yeah, doing the, like I ended up doing the, the the pong after like I don't know how long it was, but yeah, um, yeah after a while, I just started doing just kind of you know yeah, floating back back and forth. Yeah, and, yeah I, I loved it. I I want to do it again. There's uh, I don't know. I don't know if some places are better than others, but uh, I've, I've only had the experience at Float On. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I, it's definitely such a great experience. I highly yeah. suggest it to everybody. But yeah, I you know, too. I always get the I always get that uh, I don't want to get in a tank, and it's like, yeah, but yeah, you, yeah, you don't realize you're in a tank once you're in there. It's yeah. like it's the biggest thing in the world when you're inside that. Tank. Yeah, yeah, you have no clue. It's no. just. It's, it's amazing and then yeah and then acupuncture like I, I've been doing that like every last like six weeks I go do you, every do you go to the to the um, oriental medicine no uh, there's no? a place that I go to um, on on Sunnyside over like it's, it's the Sunnyside Health Clinic um, but they have people in there from the national or what is it Natural College or National College of Natural Medicine, I think is what it's called, or something that affects those people that are just about to finish their um, their training, which is five years, which is insane. I mean, like I trust them more than I trust my doctors, like just because of what they've done. It's like it's just unreal. And then they have the guy training them who's there too. So, and then when you're in the group with, so there's probably like four or five people in there too as well getting acupuncture done and so you feel like kind of all their energy going off mm -hmm. and like you know feeling better and so that kind of helps I think it, it helps everyone you know yeah. feel better in there and um but yeah like the stuff that they've done I just I I love it I would just want to keep going back I look forward to it every Wednesday and um they do a thing it's you know a sliding scale for the pay rate and if you're on the Oregon health plan it's free and oh so, really yeah right. so yeah I'm, i mean i'm there every yeah every wednesday and uh just waiting to get in and yeah, I mean, it's like about an hour and walk out feeling nice and they'll put these um little um radish seeds on your in your ear but on a little band-aid 
and then they put them on your pressure points and then so you can they stay on for about four or five days and so you can go and like press these rattles these into your ear on the pressure points like I have I think there were a couple for my knee and so I press press those whenever it starts you know hurting or one for headache. Right up and then you, yeah oh you that's so nice kind of like, like a little dose of week. internal medicine yeah that's cool yeah I, where's I'm, the weirdest place they put a needle on it um in between my in between my eyebrows I yeah. think um there were a few on my knee that it would it would hurt for a minute like but it would go away it was just like a like a shock like when you do uh what's it it's called acupressure like when you're like when you're doing a massage on someone and you go and you get that like a really deep massage into someone to try to loosen that up it's kind of like the same thing and so like it, it hurt for a minute just like stung and then just went away but um and then like yeah the pain that i had before was just pretty much gone like and i've been doing physical therapy a whole bunch and that wasn't like just what i've done with acupuncture has felt better than what i've been doing physical therapy that's amazing yeah, yeah I, I, might, I might have to go back i went i think once or twice and what? i uh, but i i it was students uh -huh. yeah but um I, you know, obviously once or twice, probably not enough. I mean, yeah. Um, I like the idea of being in a group atmosphere for yeah. that, actually. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. And then they, you know, they take notes on everything that's like, you come in, like all your problems you have, and they use that and sort of adjust each time. Like the second time I went in there, I told them that it wasn't quite as good as my first time. So then they adjusted it and you know, and every week I tell them like what's what's working, what's not, and then so just like every time it's gotten better and better, and it's it's amazing. Yeah, and, that's yeah, amazing. That is yeah, amazing. The more you go, it's just better, better off. Yes, it yeah, it's good. Yeah. But you got to tell them, right? Yeah, you, you got to tell them. You, you have to be, be honest. You have to be honest. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's kind of weird, you know, telling someone who's a student just like all your problems, but then you know, the more you tell them, the better the better it is. And like, right. yeah, and I, like they, you know, they'll they'll feel feel your arm they're like oh, okay i can tell you have something here you know and like they'll work on it there or you know like oh your knee feels hot and you know that's because you know it's inflamed or something so then they'll work on that spot and like you know you tell a doctor like i'm sick like okay here's some here's some drugs like right. I, i'm not going to check anything it's just what it is you know you'll be fine go you go get a prescription and but this one yeah they really just yeah take your time and just really really go and i, I love it it's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been about a half hour. Awesome.